Hi online family, Maddie here. We're here at church getting ready for Sunday and I'm so excited that you're a part of this message. We're a church that loves God, loves people and loves life. And I'm praying that this message is gonna speak to you, it's gonna inspire you and uplift you in your journey in life. So why don't you go ahead and share it with someone in your world and let's be all a part of what God is doing together. I've been noticing as my own heart has been focused on thanks, not through the gratitude journal because I didn't get one either. (laughs) Um, but just as I've set my heart on thanks going into this month, there's been a transformation that's been happening in my heart. Have you, you noticed that when you're like intentional about going, no, I'm going to be grateful. All of a sudden gratefulness just kind of begins to bubble up because you're being intentional about it. And I've been thinking a lot about what the Lord wants to do in my own heart to keep changing me, to keep transforming me. What can I do every month? You know, it's easy to go, I'm going to be thankful in November. (laughs) What does it look like in December? I'm going to be thankful for Jesus that he came. What does it look like in January? I couldn't remember what month was next. (laughs) What does it look like in January, February? I'm not going to go through them all because I'll probably forget another month this morning, apparently. You know, but what does it look like to be continually transformed? And I just wanted to read us a scripture this is where my heart's been in the last couple of weeks. It says, From now on, therefore, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we once regarded Christ according to the flesh, we regard him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. What does it look like for us to live a life where the old has passed away? And the new has come. Not is coming, but the new has come. It's happening. It's happened. This is what it says in the message version. It says, because of this decision, this is a word for somebody today, we don't evaluate people by what they have or how they look. We looked at the Messiah that way once, and we got it all wrong, as you know. We certainly don't look at him that way anymore. Now we look inside, and what we see is that anyone united with the Messiah gets a fresh start, is created new. The old life is gone, and the new life versions. Let's pray. God, we love you. We love your word. Father, I love your word. Thank you for giving us your word so that we would know what this life is supposed to look like, that we could be fully alive in our obedience and surrender to you. God, would you help us this morning, Father? Speak to us. Would you open our ears and open our eyes and help us this morning to look more like you? That's what we want. That's what I want, God. I want to look more like you. Why don't you just tell him that this morning? If that's what's in your heart, just say, God, I want to look more like you today. I want, I want this morning to change everything. I don't want to walk out of here the same. Holy Spirit, speak to me and show me the path forward. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay, so if you're looking for a title this morning, you can write down Inside Out. Almost every morning when my son, one of my sons, comes down the stairs, his shirt is on Inside Out. Does anybody else have a child that's like that? Like, I don't know what the problem is. The seams are on the inside. This is a seam. When you put your shirt on, you just lay it on the bed and then just stick your head through. You know what I'm saying? Like, but he comes down the stairs almost every morning and his shirt is inside out. And I'm like, bro, you're inside out. You're not supposed to see the seams. They're important, but we don't want to see them. I don't know what the problem is. Inside out, their socks are inside out. The shirts are inside. One time their pants will be backwards, pockets on the front. I don't know if that's just like convenience. They thought, <laughs> these fools, they put the zipper in the front. The pockets need to be there. They're like, <laughs> they're inventors. <laughs> I don't know. Inside out is a real common word in my house. And the truth is, I believe that the insides are important, right? What happens on the inside is actually what's holding the whole shirt together. The seams are what's binding it so that it doesn't come apart while you're wearing it. The inside is really, really important, but we don't wear it that way. And it's kind of like our lives, you know, the the inside is actually what's important in our lives. The inside is what counts. And yet God is, in his mercy, has graced us with an outside because I don't know about you, but I don't really want everybody seeing my insides 
because they're not as pretty and put together as my outsides can be. <laughs> I mean, physiologically, but also spiritually. You're with me, right? I'm not talking about like my actual like inside. Okay, <laughs> check in. There's a lot of laughter, Chris Walker. <laughs> The inside is important. It's more important than the outside. It's the part that God cares about, the inside, right? Sometimes we walk around and we look so put together. You know, you've, you've got like social media now that you can have a filter for everything. If you're tired, there's a filter. If you want freckles, there's a filter. You know, if you want to look like you're at the beach, there's a filter for that. You can find a filter to cover anything that you don't particularly like about yourself that day. And the outside is really easy to filter. But the inside is what counts. And what we can find is as we live our lives, we can focus so much on just smoothing the outside edges that we have no time left for what's on the inside. And the inside, the inside is what matters. And what's happened is as we surrender our lives to Christ, when you meet Jesus and you give him your life, you become a Christian, what happens is you've surrendered your life to him. And so the old is gone and the new has come. When you're united with the Messiah, what happens is from the inside out, everything changes. You're a new creation. It's like, it's instant, right? And what happens in heaven is the father above sees you through the covering of his son. And that's how we're made righteous and holy. It transforms us. I'm going to read this again. We look inside. It says in the message, now we look inside and what we see is that anyone united with the Messiah gets a fresh start. Everybody say fresh start. Fresh start. Is created new. Say created new. created new. The old life is gone. The new life versions. It's just like new life. It's time for new life. And I want you to hear this morning that from the inside out, as you say yes to Jesus and you surrender your life to him, you get a fresh start. You're created new. You don't have to walk around like the old you anymore. The old is gone and the new has come. And so I want to get straight into it this morning because I want to talk about a couple of things that happen when we start working on the inside and let God do the work on the inside, when we say yes to him, but also what it looks like as we live in the tension of heaven and earth, because who knows right now, we're living in the here now, but we're also living in the not yet. We're living in the victory of Christ, but we also have a here now that we're navigating, right? We are both being transformed. We've been transformed yet, and then we're being transformed. So there's two things I want to talk about today. The first one is, if you want to write it down, I am transformed which is what we just read in 2 Corinthians. If anyone is united with the Messiah, you get a fresh start. Have you memorized it yet? You get a fresh start. You're created new. You get a, you get a new life. And the new life just starts bubbling up out of you. Because what? Because of you've done the work? Because you got good enough all of a sudden? Or because you worked your way to be holy enough for God to accept you? No, because you were covered by the blood of Jesus. Because he was enough for you. And you got transformed because of him. If you've ever been to a Christian bookstore, one of the first things you'll see when you walk in is a butterfly. Followed by 2 Corinthians 5.17. Am I right? If you know, you know. If it doesn't have a butterfly in a bookmark, it is not a Christian bookstore. <laughs> Run. <laughs> Run the other way. If you know, you know. It's, I mean, like, that is a symbol. Everybody knows 2 Corinthians 5.17 because the butterfly. And as silly as it might seem, it's the first thing I thought of when I read this verse, except for I really started thinking about it, you know, because I'm homeschooling one of my kids this year, so I thought, <laughs> science, this is a great thing to walk through. And what happens when a larva is transformed is you have this, I just imagine like everything in my head is usually a cartoon. So I'm imagining like a larva, right? Like, just like, <laughs> you're with me, right? And it's like making its way uh, awkwardly up a tree, you know, because it's got this instinct that it needs to get up there to cocoon. It's not smooth. It's not like, it's not an emotional experience. It's a larva, and it's like <laughs> getting up the tree because it has an instinct. But say, hear, hear me, hear me, right? So like, sometimes I'm the larva. I feel like the larva. I am a bumbling idiot making my way through life. Sometimes I feel like that, just making my way instinctually up a branch somewhere, 
Hopefully nobody's looking. <laughs> but what happens, right, for us is we, we hear the voice of the Holy Spirit calling us. Like maybe you're here this morning, it's your first time in a worship service, and you're like, I don't know what it is about this, but like something in me is stirred. I've never been in worship like this and felt like what's happening in my heart and my spirit right now? I'm drawn towards this. And what you're drawn towards is the one true God. You're drawn towards the King of kings and the Lord of lords, but to you, you're like, here, I just feel like I need to be close. Like, how can I get closer? And so we have this instinct and we're just fumbling our way but we're instinctually drawn to this voice that's tenderly calling us, right? And then what happens is we're making our way towards this still small voice. We surrender our lives and we say, I want you, God. You're it for me. I want to surrender my life to you, Jesus. As we give control of our lives and say, your, your way is better than my way. Whatever you want to do, God, yes. And we surrender our lives to him as he wraps us up, Right? This little larva that made its way is now getting wrapped up in this cocoon. And the work happens. You can't see it, right? You can't see what's happening in there, but it's happening. Everything's changing inside of this cocoon. When God wraps you up in his love, when he covers you with his son, Jesus, who paid the price for your sins, which is the reason we can come before our Father in heaven, he wraps you up and everything changes. And what emerges from that moment in time when you surrender your life is a new creation. No more like bumbling larva, figuring out how to just bumble over the branches of life. Wrapped in heaven's mercy, you emerge a new creation. So if any man or woman is united with the Messiah, what happens is you become a new creation. He wraps you up and, and you're no longer that person that you were. The enemy tries to tell you, remind you, oh, you're still that. You still have those qualities. You're still doing those things. What you need to do is remind him that you've been covered and you're never going back. There ain't one butterfly that turned back into a larva, right? Nobody's like, wrap me back up. I want to go back. You just soar and you soar until the day you meet your heavenly father and you cross from this earth into heaven, right? Is it always pretty? No. Has anybody ever seen a butterfly that wasn't that graceful? Because I have. And I'm like, that's me. <laughs> I'm not butterfly. <laughs> Some butterflies are just, you know, graceful. Then there's the other ones that are like, can barely get off the, the leaf. That's me. I'm that butterfly. I'm okay with it. I'm still a butterfly. I'm not who I was. You're not who you were. If any man or woman is in Christ, he's a new creation. So I am transformed. When you say yes to Jesus, when you make him your Lord and Savior, you confess that he's Lord, you confess with your mouth, you believe in your heart, that's it. You're transformed. But in the same way that you are transformed in the tension of heaven and earth, you are also being transformed. So it didn't stop with you're transformed. Good luck. There's a transformation that keeps happening. So number two, I'm being transformed. Galatians 2.20 says, I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So I am transformed, but I'm being transformed because as I lay my life down, I want him to live through me, and that's a process. Does anybody know that's a process? That's like in every day. There's a reason his mercies are new every morning, because I'm like, (laughs) check, I need that. Thank you very much. You can work at Domino's, right? And like, you know how to make pizza, but you're still making pizza. You can be a teacher, but you're not just a teacher, you're still teaching. You're in the process of teaching. Life is a process. You can be something. I am transformed, but I'm also being transformed. Who else thought, more than meets the eye? No? Nobody. Transformers, more than meets the eye. Yes. I really wanted to use that analogy. I was going to bring a transformer. It just doesn't work. The analogy doesn't fly. But also, those things pinch your fingers. You know, you get them for your kids. They beg for the 
whatever. The, they made the like younger kids version. Now I can't even remember what they're called. Those things hurt, and they're hard to learn. It took me like 30 minutes to teach. Like, yeah, yeah, buddy, I got it. And I'm like, just go over there. I don't know. <laughs> Pinch your fingers. So I am being transformed. Romans 12, 1. It says, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. God doesn't want your dead sacrifice. He wants your alive sacrifice, right? This is a new covenant. We are alive in Christ. He doesn't want your dead sacrifice. He doesn't want your old, I have it laying over in the corner, now you can have it, God. He wants a living sacrifice, Holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. You want to worship God? It's more than just singing on a Sunday. It's offering yourself as a living sacrifice before him. You wonder why it doesn't feel like it feels on Sunday? Because worship is every day. It's our whole lives. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Can I read this in the message to you? So here's what I want you to do. God helping you. Take your everyday, ordinary life. You're sleeping, you're eating, you're going to work and walking around life. Sometimes I think God wants my impressive life. Like the parts of my life that I think he'll really like. Do you know what he wants? Your ordinary, everyday, the, thing that, the things that people don't see. The things that happen every single day and feel mundane about your life. He wants that. The God of the universe wants your mundane life. Right? Like you're brushing your teeth. That doesn't feel impressive. Very necessary, but not impressive. <laughs> he wants that moment of your life. You're brushing your hair. He wants that moment of your life. You're like filling up your car with gas. Nobody cares. God cares. He wants that moment of your life. Amen. And place it before God as an offering. You can have this too, God, every part of me. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for him. Don't become so well-adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. Instead, fix your attention on God. Somebody needs to write that down today. Fix your attention on God. I need, I need to have that on my mirror. Fix your attention on God. Every morning, fix your attention on God. I'm doing it again. Offer yourself as a living sacrifice. Fix your attention on God. You'll be changed from the inside out. You want to be changed? You want the insides to look pleasing to God, the part that really counts? You want that to be good? You want to be fully alive? Fix your attention on God and you'll be changed from the inside out just by fixing your focus on him, by looking at him, fixing your gaze on him. Readily recognize what he wants from you and quickly respond to it. Do you know that Jesus said, my sheep know the sound of my voice? You ever wonder what people mean when they say, you know, you just need to spend some time with God, really hear from him and been like, <laughs> okay. It's a real churchy thing to say, right? Like, that's, that's a churchy thing to say. Just hear from the Lord. You just need to hear from the Lord. And thought, what does that mean? Can somebody please explain to me what that means? You know the sound of his voice. Do you know that when, when I call my mom, she doesn't go, I'm sorry, who is this? <laughs> right? She knows who I am. Why? Because she knows the sound of my voice. Because we've spent a lot of time talking. So she knows what my voice sounds like. I know what her voice sounds like. You want to know what the voice of God sounds like? Spend a lot of time with him. Yeah. Read his word. Yeah. Sit with him. Don't come desperate in the biggest situations just of your life. Come in the everyday, ordinary moments, offering yourself as a living sacrifice, and you'll start to hear the sound of his voice. Trust him with the little things. Be obedient and respond quickly when he directs you in the little situations of life, and you'll learn to trust him. You'll learn to obey him. And then when the big things come, you're like, I know his voice. You cry out to him, and you're like, got it. 
I know that voice. He's instructed me before. He's been faithful before. You might be scared, but you're like, you know what? I've lived a life of trusting God, and he's been faithful here, 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 here. Oh, and he's been faithful in his word. Let me tell you what he's done through generations before me because I've read it. He's been faithful here and here and here and here. You don't have to wonder if he's going to be faithful. He's been faithful before, and he'll do it again. But how do you know his voice? You spend time with the living God and you recognize the sound of his voice. And it's easy to quickly respond and obey because you know a life fully alive comes just from him. Yeah. We're not even through the verse yet. <laughs> I love it. It says, unlike the culture around you, always dragging you down to its level of immaturity, God brings the best out of you, develops well-formed maturity in you. You want to get mature? Spend time with God. <laughs> I'm speaking to you out of deep gratitude for all that God has given me and especially as I have responsibilities in relation to you. In other words, this is people helping people, the people of God helping the people of God. Do you know that God will use you and your obedience and your surrender to him to help the people that are coming after you so you can testify what he's done in your life, that he's gonna do it again and again. Testimony is the spirit of prophecy. You start to allow him to work in your life and you tell people about it. It prophesies to the people around you. It's not just for me, it's for you too. He's done it before. He's going to do it again. We testify of his faithfulness. We're being transformed. Tell somebody about it. New life versions within you. When you're a new creation, the old is gone and the new has come, all of a sudden this new life starts to bubble up out of you and you're like, it's happening. I've been transformed and he's transforming me as I offer my life. It's a process. So what does that look like for us? What does it look like for us to be in the process of being transformed? I just wrote a few things down. We, we say often, what is your devotional life like? What does that mean? It's like another Christian term, right? Hear from God. Have a devotional. If, you don't, if you've never been in church, you're like, they're so weird. I don't even know. what. What is that? Devotional is time set aside and devoted to God. To sit down and do a devotion is like, I'm just, I'm setting this side, this time aside to devote my heart and my attention and open, open my eyes, open my ears to what God might want to say to me today. Why is it important to do it every day? Think of all of the other stuff that are, is pouring into your life every single day. And let's like, just think about percentage wise. You want to be doing okay? What are they, what's the, the saying about the dog? Like the dog you feed wins the fight? What are you feeding in your soul? You feel like you're starving for God. Well, have you been feeding your soul? Do you sit down with the word of God and go, God, speak to me through your word. This is the bread of life. Are you starving? Eat something. Set aside time to be devoted to God. Pray dangerous prayers. Say to God, make me more like you. Watch him do it. Will it be comfortable? Probably not. Will it be worth it? Absolutely. Amen. Help me with patience, God. I would like to say that I think that's probably the most dangerous one that I've ever prayed. Help me trust you, God. Help me persevere. Help me insert what you need help with. That's what it looks like to live a life where you're being transformed. Let him renew your mind. I brought a little prop with me today. Oh man, I forgot to take it apart again. I did this last service. Close your eyes, this isn't happening. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, here we go. Oh, hi Xander, you're so cute. I see you. Oh, there goes my beads, that's fine. All right, I've got my prop here today. Who's ever seen a kaleidoscope? How good are kaleidoscopes? Like, they're fascinating. My kids would look at this thing for like days and days. It's fa I, I did, <laughs> I looked at this thing. I actually have like a fancy one right here. And when you look at it, it's just, it's really cool. Do you wanna look at it? <laughs> you can look at it. You can have it actually. I forgot to give that away last service. <laughs> it's a really cute little kaleidoscope. All right, 
So this is what we have, right? A kaleidoscope. When you get a DIY kaleidoscope off Amazon like I did, you get this toilet paper roll <laughs> for $12.99. <laughs> <laughs> Great stewardship. Uh, so I've got this roll here, and it's empty. And the thing about a kaleidoscope is it's all about what's on the inside, right? right. So when I was going through this message and these verses, it's like God just made me think of a kaleidoscope, so I thought I'd show you one. You've got this vessel. We are a vessel. Let me show you where it says we are a vessel. 2 Corinthians 4 says, For God, who said, Let there be light in the darkness, has made this light shine in our hearts so that we could know the glory of God that is seen in the face of Jesus Christ. Now, we have this light shining in our hearts, but we ourselves are like Fragile clay jars containing this great treasure makes it clear that our great power is from God and from, not from ourselves. So the miracle for us is that before we have Christ, you can fill this up with whatever you want. But do you know what it feels like? It feels empty. It doesn't matter what you put in this clay jar, this earthen vessel that you have. It doesn't matter how much money you have. It doesn't matter how many people like you. None of that matters without God in the middle of it because it's empty. You can have money and you can be a believer and let God use your finance to resource the kingdom and be a powerful force. You can have nothing and give your life to the service of others and have more than you could ever possibly need and it can be a powerful force. But if you fill your life up, if you fill this vessel up with the things of the earth and, and God is not in it, it will always feel empty. So we're a vessel and the miracle for us is that the Son of God would come and live in us. He lives in your heart. There is a treasure in you and for a kaleidoscope, right, you, it's not just the vessel, it's the treasures that go inside of it, right, that make, make when you look through it, that make it shine, that make it spectacular, that, that give you these designs and these, and you know it's never the same. It's a constantly moving, constantly changing, constantly transforming picture when the treasure is inside and the treasure for us is Jesus Christ. And this is how I know. Christ is in you. You know, Jesus lives in our hearts. This is where the Bible says that Jesus lives in our hearts. It says in Romans 8, 10, but if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is life because of righteousness. Ephesians 3.17 says, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts, he dwells in your heart through faith. And I pray that you being rooted and established in love. Okay, let's go down to 2 Thessalonians 1.10. When he comes on that day to be glorified in his saints and to be marveled at among all who believe because our testimony was to you who believed. Galatians 2.20, which I read before, I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. He lives in you. The treasure of Christ is in you, is in this earthen vessel. And then what happens next in a kaleidoscope is, this is great, but what, what happens and the reason that you can look through and you can see a, re a reflection of what's happening inside is because you put these mirrors inside of it. And you and I, we are meant to not just carry the treasure in us, but to reflect it outside of us. When somebody looks through us, when they look at you, they, they're supposed to see Jesus, right? Once you're a believer, once you've surrendered your life to him, you're being transformed and you've become a new creation. When somebody looks at you, Bible, the Bible says, be holy as I am holy. Well, you're holy because Jesus is in you. And so when they look through you, they begin to see what, what a masterpiece God can make of your life when you're surrendered to him. And you put all these pieces together, and all of a sudden, when, when the light hits what God has done, when Jesus, the light of the world, who is in you, when you start to let that reflect outside of you, it's a never-ending mystery of masterpieces coming through him. And he's using your life, this vessel that we were given, to do it. Is that not a miracle? So you have been transformed when you are in Christ and united with the Messiah, and you are being transformed. And my question for you is, what does that look like for you today? Where are you at on the journey? Are you still feeling like you're empty? 
and if somebody tipped you over or you were inside out, they would see all the things that you wish they couldn't see? Or are you stepping into the confidence this morning that if somebody turns you inside out, it's no longer I who lives, but it's Christ who lives in me. And you might see a little bit of mess, but you're gonna see a lot of his glory shining through me. And I'm, I'm not a finished work right now, but I'm being transformed. I've been transformed, but I'm in the process. And I'm okay with that. And my life looks like a life of devotion because I've devoted time to God, because I've asked him to show me what he wants to change in my life today, not tomorrow, not like I walk out of church with some great ideas, but like right now. Do you know that you can ask him to transform something in your life if he's brought it to your attention? He sees you exactly where you are. You can't hide anything from him. He sees, he knows what this looks like. He sees into the heart and soul of who you are and he loves you. He sees you, he knows everything about you. In a world where it feels like we're supposed to let everybody see everything and at the same time we all feel unseen way too often. He sees you and he loves you and he knows you and he's inviting you this morning to step into the journey. It's not just an idea for somebody else today. You don't have to be good enough. You don't have to be shiny enough on the outside. He's saying, would you let me come make my home in you? Because the emptiness that you might feel from a world that can't satisfy what you were created for can be filled in a moment by the God of the universe in just a moment. In one moment, you just saying yes to him and surrendering your life, confessing with your mouth and believing in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord, that he was risen from the dead. When you confess him as Lord and you ask him to come into your heart and you surrender your life to him, in a moment, everything changes. You are a new creation. That's salvation. So we're gonna do it a little bit backwards this morning from what we normally do, but I don't, I don't wanna move away from this moment. And if we could just close our eyes just to give everybody privacy all the way across the room. If the Holy Spirit has been stirring you, you know, we talked about the larva at the beginning, you just have this instinct, like something in me is like stirring and shifting. I'm drawn towards, I need to go here. I wanna be closer to him. And your heart is saying, Jesus is Lord and you're ready to surrender your life to him and allow him to transform you right now in this moment, but also to keep being transformed. If that's you this morning, you're like, you know what, I wanna say yes to him. I wanna give you that opportunity right now. This isn't for tomorrow, today's the day. Today's the right day, today's the right time. He loves you, he knows you, he can see you, and he's inviting you in to be fully alive through his son, Jesus. So I'm not gonna count this morning, but if that's you, I just want you to raise your hand. Just put your hand straight in the air and respond to him. Say, Jesus, I want you to come into my heart. Awesome, awesome. Amazing. Thank you, Jesus. Amazing. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna say a prayer together. This isn't a prayer to me or to our church, it's a prayer to God in heaven. That's who you're praying to. And we like to do it as a family here. So we're gonna all say this together. Dear Jesus, thank you that you love me. Thank you that you died for me. Thank you that you rose again. I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart that you are the Lord. I wanna be a Christian. I'm in the family of God. Nothing will ever be the same after this moment. I am transformed in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen.